Hello, my friends. Welcome back to my channel. Laid off at 58. I'm beginning to think in the new year, though, I'm going to have to change the name because it seems to be morphing into a bunch of different things since I started it. But today is the last video I have for 2020. So I suggest you stop the video right now. Grab a libation of your choice. Mine is... A 2015 Amanichi from Covert Farms, wonderful vineyard outside of Oliver. I'll put in a link to its uh, to its uh, website in uh, the description. By the way, I'm going to be giving you a lot of links today. None of them I am sponsored for by any means. They're just ones that I found and I, I think I'd like to pass on because they've got some good information. So 2020 has not been a stellar year. It's been a very different year. Um, and I'm going to hear, here to celebrate it. I want to celebrate where we've come from. I want to celebrate what we've done and I want to celebrate where we're going. And I hope you come along for this week. I want to thank you for subscribing. I now have new subscribers. So please feel free. If you like what you're seeing, subscribe, like, pass on. Uh, it's been a lot of fun. It has been a lot of fun. So this year, I'm not sure how to describe it. As much as it's been dark times, there's also been some good times. And I want to celebrate the talent that we have, the talent that, that we have the ability to use. So I'm going to start with a quote. I'm going to start with a quote by Elvin Toffler. And it's the one that's near and dear to my heart. So Elvin said, the illiterate of the 21st century will not be those who cannot read and write, but those that cannot learn, unlearn, and relearn. And we are most certainly proving that this year. So at the end of last vlog, I asked you to get a coloring book and a notepad so we could start doing some work. I should say the next one will be on budgeting, and I'll have a little talk about that at the end of the uh, video, but keep budgeting in mind. So the coloring book, the coloring book is because we have to start looking at things differently. And pretty much by the time we were in grade one, we had learned to color side the lines. You know, we, we made leaves green and the sun yellow and, and the flowers pink. And it was very important to be inside those lines. But I think it stifled a lot of our creativity. So now we have to get around that. And how do you get around that? By coloring outside the lines. Looking at things differently. And that's what I'm asking you to do. Is to take a good hard look of where you are now and where you want to be. And I can tell you right now, coloring outside the lines is a lot more fun. And we should have done more of it as a child. The other thing I asked you to do was get a notepad. Everything I'm going to tell you today is not new. I didn't invent this by any means. It's been out there forever. It's been pretty much in every book on self-help and expansion. The lessons are good. We just actually have to do them. So one of the other things I'm going to introduce at this time is a pros and cons list. A yes-no list. A where I want to be list. Whatever you want to call it. Like coloring outside the lines, we also conformed in our, in our work, how, how we earn money. I had a high school teacher that once told me that we would be all on contract work and we would lease homes and cars and we wouldn't own them and we would travel wherever the job was and stop and start them and I thought the man was mad. Turns out he was exactly right. But we didn't actually build those skills in. So now's the opportunity. When we were terminated, when we were let go, when we were forced to retire, when we were told all of those things, we forgot or lost the understanding that all of that skill and talent and knowledge and everything that we had accumulated over those years, and I don't care if you've worked for one year or 25 or 30, you learn things. 
when we were sent from the circle, as it were, our jobs, where we spent a good portion of our time, we took those with us. Those are ours. Those are ours to spread around. Those are ours to use. Those are ours to manipulate. And now we have to go through this process of, of finding out what that is and, and what that looks like. When you were let go, when I was let go, it did not have anything to do with me. It had to do with a timing, a plague. You know, it had to do with an algorithm. It had to do with a bottom line. I'm staggered actually by what companies are doing. The, the amount of raw talent and skill talent that they're letting go in a time when they need people to be thinking outside the box on how they're going to expand their business. They're letting it go. So folks, this is where we get to re-explore, figure out what we're going to do. Some of us will be able to go back into those corporate worlds. Some of us will not. Some of us don't want to. So we have to find a way of informing what it is we're going to do. Go through your coloring book. Color outside the lines. That's the first thing. Look for inspiration. Do your pros and cons list. So I said use a book. I put it up on a little whiteboard. Big whiteboard. Put colors on it. Whatever you need. You're going to start with some really, really broad questions. You're going to start with, do I want to work inside or outside? Yes or no. Do I want to work days? Do I want to work nights? Yes or no. Do I want weekends off? Do I want weeks off? Yes or no. I'm talking about really broad questions. What do you want to do? How do you want to spend your time? And that's one thing layoffs have given you, is you can ask those questions, whereas before you were very much tied to whatever the company said. So now we don't have to. Ask yourself, do I want to travel for work? And when I say travel, do you want to be site-based? Do you want to travel for work? Do you want to commute? Do you want to sit in an airport? How do you want to move? Do you want to sit in your living room or in your basement? That's up to you. And those are good questions. That's going to inform how you look for work. If you say, I don't want to work nights and I want weekends off, if you don't ask that, you're going to get a job that works nights and weekends. And that's just going to continue this circle of, of, of dissatisfaction. We don't want to go there. We want to look for things, possibly, they're, I'm calling them differently funded incomes. For, for I don't know what else you would call them. People who have stepped outside the box and done things differently. Some out of necessity, some by accident, some because they want to express themselves. I started this year not knowing that I would have a YouTube channel. I started this year not knowing that I would have subscribers. And here I have them. And it's okay. And it's fun. I have started to look at how people have done things differently. I like YouTube. I like YouTube because it, it's a community of, of people who have self-thought and, and they put it on there. My sister likes to say that if you want to build a planet, you go to YouTube because somebody's not only built a planet, they have the plans available for you. There's Spotify. There's Etsy. There's um, Reddit. Those are just a few a few ways of, of, of earning money. And I want to celebrate the people that have. Like I said, I'm not sponsored. These are people I follow that I'm going to be talking about. These are people I've used. These are people that have decided that the 9 to 5 wasn't working for them. So they've gone out on their own. Some of them, it's a part-time thing. Sometimes it's a full-time thing. But they've been creative. And they've thought outside the box. And I'm thinking that this is where we need to be too. So I'm going to spend a few minutes. All of these will be linked in, in the uh, subscription below or the, the little comments below. Have a look. Then do some more exploring. Then send some to me that I haven't found yet. 
So the first one I want to talk about is the Mount Pleasant Roastery. Mount Pleasant is a subdivision in Calgary. And this gentleman decided he liked coffee. He liked coffee so much he was going to brew his own coffee. Started with a popcorn maker, I understand. Then it got bigger. And then it moved to uh, roasters in his garage. And then his wife came to him and said, you know, we're going to start spreading this around to the friends and families and the neighbors. So he roasts the coffee beans in his garage. If you go to the front of his house, there is a red box on the fence. And there's coffee in it. You take the coffee you want, you put the money back in. Strictly honored. He now has a website. <clears throat> you can order your coffee, which is probably not, not a bad thing to do. But I'm just betting that his going into the uh, garage and roasting his coffee is more fun than a lot of, a lot of people have nine to five. And it was just a hobby he had. And it was a passion he had. Derek McGillis. Derek McGillis is amazing. Derek McGillis is a woodworker that, for health reasons, couldn't do the job he was doing. So he decided that he would make something for his grandchildren to enjoy. So he made them a tree. In this case, because it's around Christmas, a Christmas tree. But it could be an anytime tree. It's just plain. And then he gave it to the kids and they got to decorate it. And then he put out a message on a community message board that said, would anybody else like these trees? Well, he got 40 orders. So here's a man who's spreading joy and paying his rent during Christmas trees, which, by the way, he builds outside because he doesn't have a garage. It's pretty amazing. And they're great Christmas trees. Oh, Phil Heckles. Oh, my God. Phil Heckles is from the UK, a.k.a. Hercule Van Wolfwinkel. So to encourage his son to do notes, to do thank you notes, he drew some pictures, what he considered really bad pictures of the pets. And then he put them on Facebook. And he gave himself this alias, added a price tag of 299 pounds, and said if anybody wanted pet portraits, he was the guy. And it was a joke. It was for fun. People took him up for it. If you, when you go onto Facebook and look at this guy, they're, they're really charming. The pictures are really charming. They're called Rubbish Pet Portraits. So what he, he's done is he's said, don't give the money to me. He doesn't want the money. What he wants you to do is give the money to the charities he supports. And in this time of COVID, he has done a lot for these charities. In fact, he can't keep up with the portraits. I'd like to see him turn it into a business because I'd support him. My dog needs one of his portraits. Lad Boy. Lad Boy is out of this world. He's one of my inspirations on YouTube. He started a YouTube channel. And it was just the antics he and, and the wife get on. And they are hilarious. They're based out of the UK. As uh, the missus says, she's they've never had to go to a food bank, but they've come awfully close. So three years ago, he decided he would put out a, a, a novelty song. And uh, he took the song, we built this city on rock and roll, to say he built this city on sausage rolls. And believe it or not, it went to UK Christmas number one, which is a real big deal in the UK to get to number one. And he took all the sales, did not take any profit for himself, and gave it to a food bank. So the next year, he did the same thing, and he got to number one. And lo and behold, this year, he got to number one with another song and gave all the money to the food bank. That now puts him in the same category as the Beatles and the Spice Girls. The only other two bands that have made it to Christmas number one three times in a row. At one point, he's given 70,000 emergency kits, or emergency food baskets. He's funded them. That's remarkable. Because he put himself out there. He did something different. Curiosity Inc. is out of Edmonton. The fellow is out of retail. Besides, he needs a life change. And he's always bought and sold things. So he's now buying and selling. He's buying hoarding, hoarder houses at this point. Watch his mini-series on hoarder houses. They are hilarious. And he buys and sells them. This is how he makes his income. 
And he has a lot of fun doing it. And he is a good man. He does a lot of good for his community as well. It's on YouTube. Itsy. A friend of mine does the most extraordinary cards. And you download them from Itsy. She does it in her evenings and her weekends. And she sells them. And it's just a fun thing to do. We have amazing opportunities. We just have to step outside our normal ideas of what work is. And now that we have these isms that we're, we're up against, we're going to have to be a, a bit more um, imaginative, a bit more freewheeling, a bit more daring. I did not know I was going to have a YouTube channel. I'm really liking having a YouTube channel. Some of you may have noticed that when I first started this, I was doing the profile or the portrait ones. I've now learned landscape. This is the second iteration of this uh, particular uh, YouTube vlog because in the process I managed to delete the other one. So I'm learning about that too. <laughs> and before the next one, I'll probably be learning on how to use a bigger camera other than my telephone. This is the end of 2020 and a good portion of us will say thank you. There are a lot of people who have done amazing things in 2020. Extraordinary things that need to be recognized. Private things, personal things. Things like losing your job and picking yourself up and dusting yourself off and going forward. Building community. Because we haven't had the chance to be in community, we We've built really different ones. So 2020 is coming to an end. 2021 is coming towards us quickly. And I want to thank you all for subscribing, and sharing, and liking. Your comments have been amazing. My three whole vlogs. And I want to thank you, all the friends that have supported me. In this time. I want to reach out to the people I used to work with. And say thank you for the skill lessons that you've given me. And no hard feelings. It's just the time. I get it. I get it. I've been there before. I'm 58. It's, it's happened before. So for the next year. The next great adventure. I'll be here. I'll be teaching you new things. Sharing new things. Homework for this week is you have to find your money outlays. Budgeting. But what I want is how much money is coming in, how much money is going out. And don't forget the beer, the cigarettes, the lottery, drugs. <laughs> There's uh, no judgment here, but we're doing budgeting. And the one thing I know is people forget about how much money they spend on things that they don't actually write down that aren't rent and utilities, so I want it all. Start gathering it all. And uh, we'll show you how to make do with less and enjoy it more. So, 2021's, or 2020 is out. 2021 is coming in. Cheers, I'm Jean. I'll see you next week. <laughs>